Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I want to bring you my 10 tips and tricks that will help you become better at AoE farming. Let's not waste any time and dive right in. Tip number one, jumping to increase AoE distance. For those that don't know, AoEs that come from players' models can have their range increased by jumping when they cast the spell. I learned this back in Classic when we were speedrunning Blackwing Lair and AQ40. We used to jump to maximize the distance for that sappers would go. This works well with all AoEs that come from the player. Here, you can see me using Arcane Explosion and it not hitting the mob. Neither of us move, but when I jump in the air, my Arcane Explosion gets a little extra distance. A lot of the time when I am Arcane Explosion spamming, I will be jumping to make sure I am hitting every mob in my range. Tip number two, avoiding daze. Daze is a pretty annoying mechanic. It reduces your move speed by 50%, and if you are unlucky, you can get chain dazed and die. There are two pretty cool ways you can avoid this mechanic. Daze has a chance to happen when a mob is hitting you in your back. You can avoid daze easily by making sure you turn and face the mobs as they are hitting you. Another way to avoid daze is from shield effects. You are unable to be dazed when you have a shield buff applied. This includes power word shield, mana shield, and ice barrier. Quick note, you can only be dazed by melee attacks, not ranged attacks. Using mana shield and ice barrier as well as facing mobs will be key to future farms and avoiding daze. Tip number three, leeway. What is leeway? Well, leeway is in the game for lag and melee attacking. It's a latency system that buffers melee combat to allow people to hit targets a little further than you normally would, in case there is weird lag going on. Leeway attacks increase the range of the melee swings pretty massively as you can see in this clip. Melee attacks have an increased range when the player is strafing side to side or jumping. As you can see here, when someone in combat is strafing or jumping, melee range is increased by a lot. This happens for enemy mobs too. If you are strafing or jumping, they will benefit from leeway. This is a trick we see used a lot currently in Wailing Caverns. You can avoid a lot of melee damage taken when abusing leeway correctly, such as backpedaling while kiting. Tip number four, ice block mob stacking. Ice block is used for more than just saving your life. It is very important for getting a lot of mobs stacked in one spot. When you ice block all ranged mobs will stop using their range attacks. No bow shots, no spell cast, nothing. When you are in ice block, all ranged mobs will run to your position and start auto attacking your ice block. There are a lot of farms where you don't have the ability to line of sight and get ranged mobs closer to you. You will see mages constantly using ice block to get a large amount of units stacked for an easy kill phase. When you leave an ice block, never jump, as this will cause you to take a lot more damage from melee attacks. If you just hold forward out of the ice block and spam Nova, you'll be able to avoid a lot of instant damage coming out of the ice block. Tip number five, buy and play Castle Warriors. For those that don't know, I am an indie game developer and I own my own game studio called Cluck Games. We are a two-man development team with our first release currently on Steam and early access called Castle Warriors. It's a strategy auto battler inspired by old StarCraft custom games and vampire survivors. This has nothing to do with Mage AoE farming, but if you're a fan of strategy games and auto battlers, I would appreciate you checking out my game. Thanks. Tip 5.5, world buffs and movement speed. The boon world buff from BFD is pretty massive, and the main reason for this is 20% move speed. In original classic, the only way to get this kind of buff was from the Zanzil elixirs from ZG. This buff was massive for basically every dungeon farm in the game. The 20% move speed allows you to easily outpace mobs with blink and avoid huge amounts of damage. While the other buffs from Boon are also incredible, if you are farming without 20% move speed, you are a silly goose. Tip number six, engineering. Engineers get access to a lot of cool toys and effects that can assist in farming, but the main reason you want it is for grenades, sappers, and dynamite. Even for just phase one, let's take a closer look at heavy dynamite. Heavy Dynamite does 128 to 172 damage. Arcane Explosion Rank 2 does 58 to 65 and costs 120 mana. So on average, one Dynamite is worth 2 to 3 Arcane Explosions of damage and mana. Heavy Dynamite has solved almost all my problems in my kill phases during Stockades, being able to kill all the mobs before they can run away very smoothly. As we get further into Season of Discovery, our pulls will become much longer and more intense on our mana. Dynamite having a 60 second cooldown will allow you to get multiple casts off in the longer pulls. It's very important, couldn't recommend engineering more. Tip number seven, spell power. 
This may seem like an obvious one, but I want to emphasize the scaling of spell power with Living Bomb. Here, I will be showing two separate pulls and stockades. One with zero spell damage gear on, and the other with my regular gear on, which is currently equal to 102 bonus fire damage. I'll have a link to my current gear in the description below. As you can see with the zero spell damage pull, my explosions are hitting for 72 and critting for 108. When I get to the kill phase, I am already oom and struggle to finish off the mobs before they run away. Here, you can see me doing the pull on my spell damage gear. Living Bomb is hitting for 114, which is 42 more damage per mob hit. If this explosion is hitting 10 mobs, that's 420 extra Living Bomb damage going off, spread across all the mobs, obviously. For crits, it's critting for 172, which is 58 more damage on the crits. As you can see, the kill phase is way cleaner and I have plenty of mana left over for Arcane Explosion. Living Bomb scaling with spell damage is amazing. I recommend prioring it wherever you can. Phoenix Bindings, Phoenix Gloves, Invoker's Mantle, and Invoker's Cord are all really cheap and easy spell damage options you can pick up off the Auction House. Tip number 8. How to Face Tank AoE. The first playstyle I want to go over is Face Tanking, which I use a lot in open world farms or versus mobs that are lower level than me, such as Dead Mines. The key interaction here for the Face Tank farming is Living Flame and Regeneration. Living Flame does spell fire damage which counts as arcane damage for the healing from regeneration. The amount of healing you receive will keep you alive versus some pretty insane damage. You want to make sure you have temporal beacon on yourself before casting living flame. I like to get 4-5 to five living bombs out, then living flame. Then you just spam arcane explosion until all the mobs die. Add on the extra healing you receive from the arcane explosion spam, and it's a pretty incredible what you can live through. Tip number 9. How to Dungeon Blizzard AoE. This is the playstyle I expect to be dominant going forward into Season of Discovery, so I recommend learning it now. Blizzard will be amazing for massive pulls where you can't handle the incoming damage from Elite slapping you. You can play this style with or without regeneration. If you aren't running regeneration, I recommend Fingers of Frost. I have a video going more in depth into this style. In Phase 2, we will have 5 points in the Shatter for 50% increased crit chance. It will be pretty amazing. What you want to do for this style is grab as many mobs as you can and then get to your kite spot. You will then start throwing out 6-8 to eight living bombs, living flame, and then begin to blizzard kite. By using living flame after the living bombs are out, you'll ensure that the blizzard slow is keeping all of the mobs stacked tightly in the living flame, making sure they're taking maximum damage. Add on the living bomb crits from fingers of frost, and you speed up the kill phase so much. Come phase 2, with all the extra mana and talents we will have, this style will be king for a lot of the content. Tip number 10, weak auras and add-ons. There are a few add-ons I couldn't recommend more for mage farming, and the most important one is called weak auras. This add-on lets you create custom code that will track certain things for you in-game. I am currently working on a weak aura pack that will have a lot of things super handy for mage farming. I'll be releasing it in a few weeks alongside a video going over weak auras and add-ons more in detail. For now though, I use Cave and B's weak aura that tracks the amount of mobs in Living Flame, as well as the amount of Living Bombs currently on a target. While there are a lot of super important add-ons out there, I tend to be a minimalist when it comes to them. I highly recommend Plater. It makes it way easier to see what HP the mobs are at, and who is missing Living Bomb. I also use Nova Instant Tracker to track my dungeon lockouts, how many mobs I've killed, as well as the XP and gold gained during those runs. There are a lot of weak auras out there that can track your uptime on buffs and other things. Make sure to customize this to your liking. Keep an eye out for my weak aura video coming out sometime before phase 2. The pack I'm working on should be pretty awesome for mages. Okay, that's my list. I hope you found these tips and tricks helpful. There's a lot going on with mage AoE farming, and it can be pretty overwhelming if you dive straight into it with big massive pulls. Start small. Learn baby pulls first and then work your way up to the big boy challenges. When I was first learning stockades, I wasn't doing massive 15 mob pulls. It takes a lot of practice to get this stuff down, but I do believe in you guys. We mages are kings of farming, and you can become one too. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Hope to see all of you out there in phase two and beyond. Take care, friends.